برامجنا في راديو بلدي كل يوم جمعة من الثامنة وحتى التسعة صباحا مع ليلى الحسيني في بث حي ومباشر عبر WNZK راديو 690 AM صباح الخير بلدي صباح الخير لكل مستمعينا Welcome to Radio Baladi, the first Arab, Middle Eastern and American simulcast radio show Radio Baladi is broadcast every Friday morning on WNZK 690 AM from 8 until 9 Eastern Time on Good Morning Michigan with Layla Al Husseini Our call on number 248 557-3300 and now stay tuned for the best radio talk show on Arab and American issues with your host Layla Al Husseini <laughs> Good morning, and thank you for being with us. This is Khalil Hashem, editor via Michigan.com. Layla is traveling uh, this week and next week, I believe, and we wish her safe travel and safe return to us. The weather today is about uh, 34 degrees. It's very chilly outside. Uh, the temperature is expected to reach about uh, 55 this afternoon. There is no rain today, so it's going to be a dry day. Uh, there is no secret that uh, the cold weather is approaching very quickly. So uh, be ready and uh, warm up and keep stay warm. Again, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, you're the best of listeners. Uh, today is the 20, I believe it's the 28th of uh, October. And the, the days are just going by so fast. You know, yesterday we were talking about the presidential election. It is two weeks away. It is on November 8th and uh, maybe less than two weeks away. So uh, a reminder that Halloween is on uh, Monday. Try to be as safe as possible. Keep your children safe. Uh, the authorities uh, uh, recommend that you go with children if you go on trick-treating. And, um, you know, don't leave your children at the door when people knock on the door. Make sure there is an adult with them at all times. Um, you know, uh, we also recommend that, uh, you know, you don't, don't let your children carry any kind of, uh, uh, you know, weapons, uh, swords or whatever it is. Uh, even toy weapons is not a good idea. So there are a lot of, a lot of other ideas you can... Uh, 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 address children, accept and others, and avoid uh, all kind of weapons or sprays, and, and uh, uh, specifically to schools. You know, the schools recently are telling us not to do that, so please uh, be careful. In the news, uh, the war in the Middle East continues, the war in Syria continues. Uh, uh, unfortunately, Arabs continue and Muslims continue killing each other in that area. And uh, this week has been nothing but bad news and, and more killings and more offensive, offenses and one against each other. Hopefully, we will find a way to stop killing each other and, uh, and find a peaceful solution. Elections in Lebanon are heating up. Uh, the Lebanese have been without a, a president for uh, God knows how long, two and a half years. And uh, they continue... Uh, fighting each other, or bick uh, bickering rather, it's not really fighting, but uh, fighting with words, that is, over uh, uh, who's going to be the president of Lebanon. And as you well know, if any and one of you who's familiar with Lebanese politics, in Lebanon the president can only be a Christian Maronite, and, and then the rest of the cabinets are divided, uh, and the post divided according to religious uh, affiliation. And, and uh, you know, they've been fighting or, 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 or uh, arguing over who's going to be president uh, for over two and a half years, and they have not reached a consensus. Uh, we hope that they would soon and fill that vacuum. Not that the president has any power in Lebanon, but at least it would fill a, a, a vacuum and, and, and show that at least Lebanese can agree on one thing. Elections in our country. Unfortunately, things are still going in a way that we don't like to see it going that way. It's, uh, uh, we're talking about whether it is local or national, you know, election has become more into this pissing match of 
uh, one candidate against the other. We still really don't know what the issues are. We're still not clear how they're going to address the major and important issues that are facing uh, our country. Unfortunately, neither candidate, in my opinion, is really good enough to be a president, but because of the two-party politics, we are stuck with two solutions or two choices, rather. If we want our, count, our vote to count, there's always going to be a third party, but, you know, this never happens in America, unfortunately. Um, is Paul with us this morning? Good morning, Paul. Good morning. How are you, Khalil? Good, good. How are you, Paul Sophia? Doing well, well indeed. Good. Hey, how are you today, Paul? I'm doing well, thank you. One, tell us a little bit about you, please. Yeah, I am a resident of Dearborn. Um, I grew up in Detroit and moved to Dearborn, um, boy, back in the mid '80s. And I've, my family is from Lebanon. I was born here, and I've been involved in local and um, national politics as well over the years, and um, have. Great concern for the world, as you know. Um, you know, like you mentioned earlier, that uh, neither person is really qualified or has a temperament to really be president. I don't know what the qualifications would be, but um, we've had better choices. Um, I have a bachelor's from University of Michigan, a master's in business, and um, working for a biotech company now. Yeah. Now you've been you've been active in the in the Republican Party as well. Is that correct? Yes, I still am. And uh, you ran for office a couple times. I did. I ran for um, well, this last time um, for state representative, and okay. I didn't make it past the primary. I lost by about fifty-four votes, something like that. But okay. um, you know, there's other four votes. votes. I'm sorry. How many votes? Fifty-four. Fifty-four votes. Wow. Yeah. Yep. And you know, the funny Ooh. thing is, Khalil, I know 54 people who have not, who did not go to the polls, who said they would vote for me. You know, they, yeah. you know, and I said, oh, brother, you know. I know, but, I know. That's like, you know, what can we do to really, to really uh, uh, explain to our people, our community, the importance of voting? I mean, I know a lot of people who are educated, well-meaning, they work hard, at the same time. I don't go out and vote. And, and, um, and then when, and after the election, they say, yeah, we should have voted. We did. And I say, why didn't you? you know, and they always come up with these excuses that really, you know. And, and, and the other thing is that we always complain about people not paying attention to us and, and people were not as represented as it should be. How can we do that? Well, that's the age-old question. Every group has said the same thing, you know, how can we get more of our constituency to get out there and vote? And I think it starts at the local basis, the people that are in office, and when I say in office, I'm talking about the precinct delegates, the people running for state reps, um, they, they need to be active in the community, introducing themselves to people, and being there for the people. And what a precinct delegate is, it's an entry level position that people actually run for for their precinct is Republican and a Democrat a delegate in your uh, precinct and there's only like maybe six seven eight blocks that you would be the precinct for but yeah. you can be the liaison to bigger things um, your liaison to your state representative or to a city council member or you can introduce people to things like that and that can help get them engaged it's got to happen on the grassroots level yeah yeah yeah. It's, it's really unfortunate. So what's been going on with the Republican Party in the area? Well, what's been going on is obviously there is going to be an election coming up in November, uh, first Tuesday, and yep. there's a lot of good candidates to take a look at. And the beautiful thing is you don't have to vote straight party um, like you did in the primary. Uh, you can sure. vote straight party. You can hit the R or the D and then... Um, look at the nonpartisan races of judges and millages and all that stuff, or you can switch back and forth for your favorite candidate. So that's um, really what we're um, preparing for. Um, the judge races are very important. We're focusing on those. We have um, the Republican candidate for state representative who uh, 
won over me for the primary, and um, there's a lot of controversy internally, as you know, with the presidential yeah. race. But on yeah. a local race, yeah. it's in the statewide races, still vibrant, still important things to um, to vote for, and I encourage everybody to do so. Yeah. I mean, what's, it seems to be there is a major division in the party uh, nationwide over the Trump issue. And, uh, uh, you know, I mean, even in the state recently, I think one of the officers has been asked to resign because she's not going to support uh, Donald Trump for president. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Um, I think maybe this year we should take a lesson from Lebanon. You know, they did without a president for a while, right? And what's the downside of that? <laughs> Nothing happened. Yeah, exactly. Nothing, Nothing happened. happened. And, uh, yeah. you know, that may not be a bad thing given um, what's going on on the national level. But uh, I'm, I'm joking, of course. But it is interesting because Donald Trump is a unique individual and the people that are for him, um, they're, they're feeling kind of helpless and they are the ones that, all their jobs go overseas, then they see a lot of things happening, they can't make their mortgage payment, they want to bring manufacturing back here. He's appealing to a very um, specific niche of the population, and interestingly enough, the issues that affect um, the blue-collar workers kind of transcend, whether they're you know black, white, Arabic, Jewish, whatever, they're the ones that are affected most by um, what's been going on with the manufacturing sector. They used to have good jobs. They used to be able to provide for their families, and they're seeing that go away. And their anger is now palpable. Um, I don't know how much of the population it represents, but it's certainly a significant amount of people because we're seeing this uh, division, not only um, within the party, but within the nation. Do you, do you see the party splitting? Um, I don't know what... Splitting means you mean formally, or yeah, informally? I mean, like historically you had the Whig Party, and then this is how the Republican Party was born, because right. uh, they disagreed over the philosophy of the party, and definitely there is a difference philosophy right now. I mean, watching uh, uh, Newt Gingrich uh, on on television a couple of days ago with uh, with uh, on Fox News of all people, and uh, he really sounded like this guy is. is you know, getting off uh, on, on the ledge somewhere. It's kind of interesting because it's always been a diverse party of ideas, and, you know, there's the big government Republicans, there's the small government Republicans, there's the social um, issue uh, Republicans, and everybody in between. So it kind of ebbs and flows. I don't, I think it'll come out different, but it goes yeah. in waves. It goes in stages, and, you know, we saw back when Clinton was president, they said the era of BIF government was over. And now we're yeah. seeing government grow again. So I think yeah. the same type of philosophical changes happen within the party. Um, I don't see, you know, I'm just one guy, um, one man's opinion, but I don't see a third party springing out of this. And because of the electoral college, it would be a tough thing to do. Um, both parties have evolved. And, you know, we'll see an evolution, but... To what degree, I couldn't say. It'd be just my opinion. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, uh, you have a Middle Eastern uh, 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 origin, and, and uh, you know, hearing Trump really talking about all of the different ideas about people from the Middle East and, and, and what he wants to do, how, how does that make you feel? I mean, it must be really tough for you trying to, because on a good day, you're a Republican. You want to go out there and tell people, vote for my candidate, for, for vote for my party. It's, it's got to be tough for you doing that right now, considering Mr. Trump is uh, the candidate for the Republicans. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting. It's an interesting dynamic because um, the Middle Eastern community is not a single thought or a monolithic community. I mean, we have, um, there was an imam in... Um, the news recently who is supporting Trump. He was at the rally in Novi a few weeks ago, and he laid out the case for Donald Trump. He has, Donald Trump has backed off on some of the rhetoric. But again, it's splintered just like, you know, people that live on your block. Some people like one candidate, some people like the other candidate. But it's a little bit uh, tough trying to 
convince people that the top of the ticket is good for everybody when the rhetoric at the beginning was really heated and pointed at certain people. Um, well, he continues to screw, you know, rhetoric against uh, Muslims and against uh, Middle Easterns and, and crazy rhetoric against, uh, you know, dividing the country. I mean, today in the New York Times, it talks about uh, Trump's uh, supporters are pledging a revolution if he doesn't win. I mean, we're talking about violence here. We're not talking about the difference of opinion. This is this is a major stuff. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. Um, it's you know that that part is troubling. I yeah. don't think I take it real seriously yeah. um, because that, that's that's a minority. That's a minority of a minority, and yeah. the division within the party speaks to you know the old time small government fiscal responsibility. Um, Republicans who believe in safety nets and helping the people out. But the New York Times has got to sell papers. They're not exactly objective. But, you know, if you go different areas, you're finding the Middle Eastern people, some of them absolutely detest the man. Um, they can't stand to see him on the television. Other people say, you know what, the issue is really economy and protecting manufacturing and American jobs. So, it's a priority that people have to make internally according to their own conscience. And one of the things that I think is important, that whoever wins is going to have to bring us together because Absolutely. the rhetoric Absolutely. on both sides is just vile and is yeah. destructive. And I don't know how to 330 million people, <laughs> we got these two, but, you know, that's the reality. <laughs> so, you know, is, I, 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 really I can't explain it. Yeah. I can't explain it on either yeah. side. There are so yeah. many yeah. people that um, have the wherewithal and how can they can work with world leaders and also people internally. I mean, everybody has a purpose. Everybody who's obeying the law, whether you're, you know, a Ph.D. or whether you mop the floor at night, you have a purpose and you serve society just by virtue of you're a law-abiding citizen with a productive job. Why can't people see that? Everybody has that and try to protect everybody's interest without trying to push somebody over the ledge. Yep. And yep. a lot of this is pure ignorance. I, you know, I see a lot of people... I think, I think, I think you, hit, you hit on an important point, and we're going to get back to that one immediately after. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. We're talking to Paul Sofia about the elections, and, and uh, please stay tuned. It's never too early to get your child on the right track. From their first words to first grade, Dreamy Children's Center in Troy works closely with parents to provide an experience that goes beyond early education. The highly qualified and experienced staff use a variety of programs that can help nurture important personality traits like responsibility, independence, problem solving, motivation, and respect. They also have educational programs ranging from preschooling for infants, toddlers, transitional toddlers, and pre-K to Montessori approved programs and bilingual curriculums for young children. They're open from 6 a.m. to 6.30 p.m., can provide breakfast, lunch, and dinner with snacks in between, and can also arrange for after-school pickup. Dreamy Children's Center in Troy is located at 37373 Dequinder, just above 16 Mile Road, and can be found on Facebook at Dreamy Children's Center. Ask about the free preschool program. Call today, 248-680-9170, 248-680-9170. When you're looking for the best in optical care, Dr. Imad Nakash is your doctor to see. With years of experience and thousands of successful procedures performed, you can trust your eyes to Dr. Imad Nakash. See Dr. Imad Nakash and his professional staff for your eye care needs. There's two locations to serve you. In Hazel Park, call 248-336-3937. 248-336-3937. In Rochester Hills, call 248-299-3937. That's 248-299-3937. A car accident can change your life in an instant. As a result of a car accident, you may become unemployed. As a result of a car accident, you may need a lot of medical treatment. People think that insurance companies are on their side. Why? Because they're giving them one or two benefits. Are they giving them all the benefits they deserve? How would one know unless you consult with an attorney? Call the law offices of Jumana Kiruz at 248-557-3645, 248-557-3645.
3645. Life for Relief and Development is a nonprofit charity that has been providing humanitarian aid and development to people and communities regardless of race, color, religion, or cultural background for over 22 years. When disaster occurs here or around the world, Life rushes to provide food, medical aid, and shelter to those in need. Life also has development projects that provide medical relief, water purification, educational programs, relief for orphans, and much more. Your help and support can greatly improve these efforts. All donations are tax deductible. For more information, please visit our website at lifeusa.org or call 248-424-7493. That's lifeusa.org, 248-424-7493. Welcome back, and thank you for being with us. We're talking to, uh, about the election, we're talking with Paul Safaya. He's, uh, 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 <clears throat> he's, he's been with us uh, since uh, 8 a.m. Paul, I, I, what, when I look at our community, there seems to be confusion between politically conservative and socially conservative. Uh, you know, our community is definitely socially conservative, but it's not politically conservative. And, and do, do you see that confusion, uh, you know? And this is maybe why more people associate themselves with the Democratic Party than the, uh, than the Republican Party? That's part of the reason, uh, Kalel, is because of that. Um, another part of the reason is people are fearful, um, the first, second generation, and it's more appealing knowing or perceiving, not, even, not knowing, but perceiving that help will be there if you need it. You're a stranger, you know, in a strange land. Um, so, you know, they perceive that the Democratic Party is, I'm going to be there to help them, when in reality, it, the same social system and safety net will be there. Um, and it's interesting because as people become more Americanized, you know, a few more generations down here, they tend to go to the um, conservative side, especially because of finances. Um, the uh, Middle Eastern community is a very successful community when you look at the average incomes uh, about eight to yeah. ten thousand dollars per household higher than the average American so they mm -hmm. tend to transcend and tend to become um, you know, financially conservative and then they will tend to vote for a Republican when that um, when that time comes but it's not going to happen overnight because of a lot of the fear factors and I think the media does take advantage of that and you know that that's part of the problem. Um, as far as the social well, you know, the, the other problem also, uh, Paul, I mean, I've attended quite a few on the national level and on the state level. Every time we get the Republicans together, you know, you get a quite a bit of, uh, of uh, hostility toward, uh, you know, toward Muslims and Middle Easterns and, and specifically Muslim Americans. And, and uh, you know, it's kind of unfortunate. Uh, you know, even during McCain, during previous elections, which were... I attended as a, as a journalist. There was a, quite a bit of hostility there, you know. Um, so it, I, I think it needs to be needs to be looked at from both sides, you know. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And I think you know th this is this is the part that puzzles me. Um, you come to Dearborn, you go out to you know Sterling Heights, Livonia, where there is a lot of Middle Eastern people. The people are genuine. They're warm. They're inviting. You know. The problem I had with campaigning and knocking on doors is people want to say, you know, I said, oh, I smell something baking. They will come on in, you know, get some pitaya or something like that. I said, I don't have time. And that's what the people have got to get to know, the people of the Middle Eastern community, because they're a warm and a family-orientated community. Now, a part of that, that it doesn't get transcended and translated into the population as a whole, at least politically, is because yeah. of some of those barriers you speak of. What we have to do is, what well, we don't have to do, but what people should do is, first of all, come here um, to Dearborn or anywhere there's a large Middle Eastern community, get to know the people, enjoy the food, the restaurant, the shops. But by the same token, let's bring some people from the Middle Eastern community to some of these places where they can get to know each other and see each other and things like that. Ignorance and getting your news only from the television, regardless of what show you watch, is not the place where you should be educating yourself. I don't absolutely, care what it is. Absolutely. 
And Absolutely. if you stick to that, you're going to stick to ignorance. I mean, yeah. it's as simple yeah. as you jump on the Amtrak and you go west, you're going to hit Chicago from Dearborn. Nothing's going to change. <laughs> so until we get everybody together and do more than talk, we actually work together, then we will, um, you know, we're going to see the same reaction. On my block, I've got, you know, Orthodox Christians, I've got Sunnis, Muslims, a Jewish family. And when there's a big snowstorm out, People are helping each other shovel the snow. They don't say, oh, yeah. you're, you know, Sunni or you're Shia, I'm not helping you. Somebody's got their snowblower out, they go to the other person's driveway or at least their sidewalk. It's because everybody gets together. They don't see each other that way. They see each other as human beings with similar concerns. I've got to get the kids out. I've got to get to work. And they, they work together. We work together. We have block parties. There's no issues going on. Take that model, expand it out, and I think we'll have a beginning. But people are, um, you know, they're on that train track. They're going to go down that ride no matter what. And um, it's up to everybody involved that's open-minded and has got a good heart and is willing to reach out to make, you know, extend the olive branch. It's not going to happen overnight, but at least it will be a start. You know, I'm, I'm convinced. Absolutely, that absolutely, yeah. I, I, think, I think you bring up a really good point, which is, you know, moving away from the national rhetoric into the local level and, uh, you know, uh, the human level. Basically, yeah. we're all in the same boat. You know, the other thing is that, you know, and this, both candidates are really guilty of that, and everybody will tell you that they want to make America better, America great, America this and America that. Nobody tells you how. Right. You know, how are you going to make America better? You know, what is, what is your plan? Well, I'll tell you when I get there. Well, you know what? You're not going to tell me when you get there because you don't know. If you knew, you, you would tell me right now. And that's, I think, part of the frustration is that none of them, neither one it really has put out a clear plan on what they want to do and how they want to do it. And maybe they don't know. Maybe they don't know. Well, the one thing, and that, that's, you know, that's an issue that I think Donald Trump has come out and said about the manufacturing jobs. I'm not sure Hillary has come out with any policy other than Trump is a bad guy. Um, you know, people are going to have to vote their conscience. They're going to, you know, what is important to me is the pocketbook or is it, you know, this uh, guy from New York who talks and acts like he's from New York? So, well, but I mean, they, they don't have a was, it, and we don't answer that. The, that's, the, on the, our, that's on us. Exactly, but Trump, when he says that he wants to bring manufacturing jobs. He still, do, I mean, anybody can say, you know, I, I want to give you the moon, but you know, how are you going to do that? And we are at the point where everything is so commingled together, you know, uh, how are you going to convince uh, Ford to abandon its plant in, in, in Mexico and then bring it here and bring it to, to Michigan? Um, he really didn't say how he's going to do that. You know, we've yeah, had a right. lot of promises from politicians and they went nowhere so well it's um, an interesting I, thing this is inside baseball but even in the race for um state representative in the primary every candidate was just giving talking points from their party when you'd go to a debate or a forum based on which party somebody was from you knew exactly how they were going to answer the question and yeah. and the audience and the people attending did not ask for specifics. There was no follow-up questions. It was like, oh, I heard that this person wants to reduce pollution or this person wants to, you know, reduce the unemployment rate with jobs. Nobody says, how are you going to do that? And that's a simple question. The three questions they should ask is, how is this going to be done? Who's going to pay for it? And what is the um, final outcome? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and we're not getting, never asked. We're not getting that from either points. candidate. And we're only getting is personal attacks from both sides. And, uh, you know, I, even even my, my 10-year-old son, he's like, Dad, do we have to watch that? I mean, oh, yeah. even even a child is disgusted with all the pickering and the, uh, you know, uh, it's just uh, so much. Hey, can, I, um, can I be partisan for a second and bring up a happy note? Yeah. There is a um, Supreme Court justice um, running, uh, Doc, um, David Viviano, for Supreme yeah. Court here in Michigan. And sure. he has um, Italian-Arabic background. His wife is also from the Middle East. And I would suggest if somebody wants somebody from the community who's got an impartial 
reputation and is a good legal mind that uh, David Viviano should be one of the people that you vote for. What do you think of the, the, the local judge election? Um, <laughs> that's, you know, that's a mini national one. Um, I, I, don't, I don't get it. I don't understand it. I think these attacks are cowardly. When they were on Jean, when they were on Susan, it doesn't matter. Anybody who sends out attacks and they don't identify themselves, they're automatically discounted. And I know a lot of people who say, this is just turning me off. I don't listen to it. I'm doing my own research, which is the way it should be anyways, but it's absolutely disgusting. I can't, I can't explain how disgusting it is. Absolutely, absolutely. And I hope that, uh, you know, I don't care who you vote for as long as you go out and vote, and uh, let's keep it clean. Paul, I really want to thank you for being with us this morning. This has been, it's been really a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much, and, and good luck to you. Thank you. Maybe I'll see you at um, one of the bakeries. <laughs> Take care. <laughs> Sounds <Tom>. good. <laughs> Sounds good. Food, food brings more people together than anything else. Voila, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Take yeah. care. Thanks again. Bye-bye. Uh, please stay tuned. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. At Metro Detroit Endocrinology, we have specialized physicians using state-of-the-art medical devices for diabetes, thyroid disorders, and weight management. Call for an appointment at 313-914-5580 or come in and visit us at our new location at 5250 Auto Club Drive in Dearborn. Every member of our staff is determined to ensure the best of care for each and every patient. We offer many services including bone density testing, thyroid ultrasound biopsy, simulation testing, and diabetic pump training on site. Our physicians will diagnose and treat hormone imbalances and problems by helping to restore the normal balance of hormones in the body. We'll find the best solutions for your individual needs, and the schedule is never too busy to give you the personal care you deserve. For an appointment or for more information, please call us at 313-914-5580 or visit Metro Detroit Endocrinology at our new location at 5250 Auto Club Drive in Dearborn. Are you going to start a restaurant or a grocery store soon? Do you need floor plans and designs? Call Nachi Abood at 734-744-9796. Do you want to buy kitchen and restaurant equipment at discount prices? Call Nachi Abood now, 734-744-9796. New concept products and design, the trademark of kitchen equipment. 5% discount on all purchases of $75,000 or more. New concept products and design. New location, 31185 Schoolcraft in Livonia. Learn more at www.newconceptproducts.com. Call Najee Abood, 734-744-9796. Ziad Brand. Quality products from our family to yours. Ziad Brothers Importing offers the finest quality products, including brands like Sultan, Kraft, Nestle, Hook, Rigo Picon, Donna, and many more. Ask your retailer to carry these fine products, because you deserve the very best. For more information, visit our website at www.ziad.com. That's www.ziad.com. Ziad, quality products from our family to yours. Welcome back, and thank you for being with us. We're talking about the elections, and, and it's going to be the general election next week. Uh, we were talking to, uh, <coughs> excuse me, to Paul Safaya earlier. We are talking about, about the national, and uh, now we're going to continue talking to one of the candidates who's running for school board, uh, 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 Mr. Muzi. Uh, good morning. Good morning, Khalid. How are you? Good. How are you? <laughs> Wonderful. Um, just wanted to, how is the campaign going and what, what, what are the expectations? Campaign is going really well. I've uh, been for the last two months door knocking in Dearborn, meeting a lot of families and residents. Some have children at the public school, some have children at the private school. Some already had children already gone through the public school system and graduated, so been talking to so many people from many different perspectives and learning so much about the city that we think is small, but actually, it's it's huge when when you do when you do it walking. So um, it, it's been great, wonderful. 
Uh, tell us, please, uh, exactly what you're running for and, uh, you know, why uh, there are people seats. vote for you. Sure. There are two seats that are open for the Dearborn School Board because um, Trustee McDonald and Trustee Guido are retiring, and I'm vying for one of these seats. Um, I went to Fortin High School uh, as a bilingual student when I came uh, from Yemen as a 13-year-old. Mm -hmm. a teenager, and I uh, struggled a little bit in the beginning, but I did very well, uh, which helped me get accepted to U of M Dearborn, where I studied computer engineering, computer science. I interned with CompuWare, and then later on worked for, for them full-time for three years, and then moved on to Urban Science, where I work right now as a senior software developer. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I do... Uh, a lot of community work since I graduated from U of M Dearborn, and even at U of M Dearborn, I was a student center, um, kind of uh, looking for student interests. One of the milestones that we have, uh, I've had as a chair, uh, as a committee chair in the student senate, is that we agreed with the administration to open the library 24 hours during final yeah. exams, so students have the opportunity. So to what, why, why should people for you? I'm, I'm, I'm from the community. I know the student issues. I have the business background. <coughs> I established my own company in 2014. I've been working with the district on mentoring programs and policy changes on, on many things um, since 2009, since I graduated from U of M Dearborn. So I'm usually invested. I have a child at Gear Park Elementary who's in first grade. And uh, very active within the PTA program uh, at his school, um, but I'm, I've been part of the strategic planning as well uh, for for the entire district. So I'm usually invested. I'm from this community. I care about it so much. I know you can vote for two, so I hope to have one of those votes. Absolutely, um, and I, I really, you know, in on a, in a general note, on a general note. I hope that our voters will look at the candidates for what they have been doing and what their potential instead of whether you're from my country, you know, from my, originally from my country or from my town or from my, right, you know, yeah. tribe, and, and then, family, and whatever the it is. Of us. Just look at, exactly, just look at the person, you know, how active that person is and would that right. person really be a good person on the school board because education is so important you know let's law let's look beyond the uh, 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 you know uh, all affiliations except the fact that the qualification of the person and what the person exactly. can do yeah yeah, yeah. and that, uh, something that I, I, I stress very important because it comes uh, this comes in a time where cutting to education has been the norm and the yeah, people yeah. on the school board have to be really, really, really business savvy. They really know how to balance a budget, how to be very efficient, how to ask the hard questions. Because we have a due diligence. We have a duty to the people who elect us and even to the entire residents of Dearborn. We Absolutely. have to make sure that we use our ta the tax dollars that we collect <laughs> very wisely and um, at the same time offer quality education that our students will take for their life. So this is this is very important. Absolutely. And we wish you best of luck and, and we just wanted to, you know, wanted to join us and, and, and tell people, you know, we asked uh, several candidates as well. I want to thank you so much for being with us and we thank hope you for that for taking uh, this time. Thank you. Absolutely, absolutely. Again I encourage people to look at the candidate, look at the activities and Adla has been I've been very active in this community, so please don't forget that. Thanks again. We really appreciate you being with us. So uh, we'll, uh, as we wait for uh, Dr. Sawan, because we're going to be talking about the stress that uh, uh, the, the, the elections is bringing on us and how we can deal with that stress, I just want to briefly, you know, remind you that uh, uh, elections is about making choices and making the right choices. And uh, we like to think of ourselves as not only educated, but also as an emerging community, a good community. We are a good community, but uh, and, and that, that we know better. And to know better is to be 
continue climbing the ladder of civilization, which means we want to walk away from the tribal mentality. You know, you have no idea how many times people called me and said, oh, you gotta, you got to vote for so-and-so because she's my cousin. Or you got to vote for so-and-so because uh, she's from my, you know, from my town in, 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 in the Middle East. We need to walk away from that. Just because somebody is from your town and somebody is from your family, it doesn't mean that I should vote for them. I should vote for the right person. I don't care who that person is. And, and you know, because this is how we be, be making the right decision. And this is what elections is all about. Leadership is something very important. And we get who we deserve. And if we deserve good candidates, we deserve good leadership, we should really go out and select these good, good leadership and good candidates. And unfortunately, you know, I don't like to hear uh, that, that talk about, you know, vote for so-and-so because she's my cousin, he's my cousin. You know, what's really going on in the community on the local level, specifically in the judges' elections, is very disturbing. You know, all the personal attacks and all the unholy alliances and, and uh, you know, and, and, and all the spites. And it, it's, it's terrible, you know. It, what's really sad is to see the new generation that was born in this country and grew up in this country, second and third generation, behaving as if they just came out of the desert. That's not a good idea. That's not a good thing, you know. We need to get beyond that. We really need to get beyond that. We need to figure out who is the right person to vote for and vote for that person. And uh, has it been stressful on everybody? Of course it is. You know, every time I, I open Facebook, I find a new group because, you know, this is how what we're really good at in this community is division, division, division. We never come together. We never really, you know, find the right person and put them in the right place. That is unfortunate, you know. Now on, on Facebook you find all of these groups that uh, forming to vent their frustration and then, you know, write uh, this and that about everybody else. It's not a good thing, you know. Again, we're, we're awaiting Dr. Nasreen Sawan. She's going to be with us shortly, and we're going to be talking about elections and stress. Is Dr. Sawan with us? Not yet, not yet. Okay, sounds good. Um, you know, this is really where the problem lies. It lies in these areas. Um, here's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to take a short break, and, uh, it, you know, hopefully uh, immediately after the break, Dr. Sawan will be with us. Please stay tuned. أسوات زمزم الواقع على 24065 أورشد لك في مدينة باركمنكتون هالز ترحب بالجالية العربية والكلدانية تنزلات كبيرة على عموم المواد الغذائية في يوم الأربعاء من كل أسبوع لا تنسوا فرش كاري أوت جميع أنواع المعجنات وأيضا صواني الكنب المشكلة والصمون الحار لحوم حلال الجالية العربية والإسلامية الملحمة بإدارة قصاب الجالية المعروف سلوان جربوع زروهم على 24065 أرشد لك في مدينة فارمكتون هاوس أو اتصلوا بهم على 24846030300 أسواق زمزم للمداقع عنوان لجميع طلباتكم اتصلوا على 24846030300 أسواق زمزم للمعاملة الراقية وكرم أضيافة عنوان ماذا يقول؟ إلى أين أذهب؟ ماذا علي أن أفعل؟ لو سمحت هل تساعدني؟ ماذا قال هذا الرجل في الإعلان؟ ألا تعرف الإنجليزية؟ أعرف ولكن أساسيات فقط عليك بتعلم اللغة ولكن أين؟ يوتيكا كوميونيتي سكول اي اس ال بروجرام اساتذه متخصصون منهج متميز يمكنك التسجيل طوال العام لرسوم التسجيل ومواعيد الفصول الدراسيه عليك الاتصال بالهاتف رقم 5867976960 5867976960 تحدث اللغه وتعلم نمط الحياه مع يوتيكا كوميونيتي سكول اي اس ال بروجرام تعلم تحدث واكثر 
استوديو الدرياب بإدارة حسن حامد في ستورين هاي يحييكم ويقدم لكم هذا ما تهو بالصوت والصورة تسجيل تصوير مونتاج فيديو كود أعلانات كوميرشال داكومنتري أفلام وثائقية للترويج لبضائعكم ومحلاتكم وشركاتكم برامج تلفزيونية وإذاعية استوديو الدرياب وبتقنية عالية بإدارة حسن حامد 313-945-8860 313-945-8860 أو 248-761-5787 استوديو الدرياب الصوت والصورة اختصاصنا قشات ميديترينيان ماركت في إدارة سهر قشات وأولاده يرحبون بالجالية العربية والكلدانية جميع أنواع المواد الغذائية البان طازجة الكرازات والبهارات الطازجة داخل الأسواق مطعم ميديترينيان شيش كباب يقدم يوميا جميع أنواع الكباب المقبلات العربية العراقية وثواني الكامبو المميزة تفتح الأسواق من الثامنة إلى التاسعة مساء من الاثنين وحتى السبت ومن الثامنة صباحا إلى التاسعة مساء يوم الأحد تقع الأسواق على 3239 نورث وسترن هايوي في مدينة فارمينغتون هيلز لحم حلال للجالية الإسلامية لطلباتكم من المطعم كول 2485387855 ذلك 2485387855 قشة ميديترينيان ماركت خدمة متميزة ومعاملة راقية. Welcome back and thank you for being with us. We are joined by Dr. Swan. Good morning, Dr. Swan. Dr. Swan, good morning. Good morning. How are you today? Oh, I'm fine. I'm fine. Thank you. Wonderful. How's Chicago? Oh, it's amazing. A little bit cold. Yeah, yeah. It's cold here as well. So. Uh, We've been talking this morning about, uh, about elections and, and the, the, you know, uh, nationally and locally. And as you well know, as we get closer to the election, there's, there's this year more so than other years, which is a lot of stress. Of so course, what, 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 what are your thoughts about the elections and how can we deal with the stress? Uh, to tell you the truth, Khalid, this is the problem. All what I'm hearing, uh, actually, it's just like, hostile, inflammatory comments, arguments. Um, it's all about, you know, like the two, you know, like um, oh, um, I would say Trump and Hillary Clinton. They are just like attacking each other rather than talking about a plan to improve, you know, our nation. You know, I really want to hear more about, you know, like how to help homeless. You know, we want to find a solution for the homeless people. We want to decrease taxes, you know, on the middle income people. We want to help poor people to pay for their medical insurance. I mean, you know, like, it's, it's a huge problem. As a physician, I am seeing this every day, you know, even with Obamacare, uh, where everybody's having medical insurance and, you know, insurance companies may, may not deny you because you have, like, a pre-existing condition. I mean, the deductibles are, like, up to 10,000 and 15,000, 7,000. I mean, you know, like middle income people, they cannot come up with all of this money. I want actually to help Medicare people paying for medications because, you know, when we are gr growing older and we are over 65 or 70 or 75, I mean, people do not have, you know, you know, like big income as they used to be. And then they will end up paying for medications. Some of my patients are paying like, $1,500 for medications or even more per month. You know, I want to find a solution, you know, for the refugees. I want to find a solution for, you know, like the problems that we are having. All what we're hearing about is, you know, like how this candidate is having a problem. And we are seeing videos and we are seeing all of these hostile and inflammatory arguments. I would say that, you know, there is like 52% of Americans say that presidential election and race is a very significant source of stress. And this is according to a new survey published by the American Psychological Association that involves 3,500 individuals. So this is really, you know, something very significant. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, specifically when there's a lot of and, and, um, and holy rhetoric about, uh, you know, hatred and, and against this group, against that group, and, and it makes uh, you know, makes the uh, distress even even higher. Exactly, and you know, like all of the uh, all of the racism, you know, that we have been hearing about, and it's basically not part of our country or our nation. You know, it hasn't been there before, and it should you know it should not be. 
Um, I don't know if you heard the, um, the first lady, Michelle Obama, uh, talk when she discussed Trump in a very emotional speech. And she was criticizing his behavior and attitude towards women. You know, this is like one, one of the things that we're talking about. And she said, you know, like, there was, like, shameful comments about, you know, like, our bodies and disrespect of our ambitions and intellect and the belief that you can just do anything, anything that you want, you know, to, you know, like to a woman, to a married woman, it doesn't really matter. This is like very cruel and it's very frightening and it, it and the truth that it hurts. It hurts everybody. It, it hurts, you know, like women and it hurts also men. You know what yep. I mean? Because remember that women, you know, you know, like uh, the woman is, you know, like the wife, she's the sister, she's the mother, so... And, you know, I would say that, you know, it hurts everybody. Uh, so I would say that, you know, we really need actually to overcome this stress because, you know, we need also to take care about ourselves. So there are so many ways to do that. So how, how do you deal with stress? Uh, the stress that is related to election, number one, is to disconnect ourselves as much as we can. Of course, we have to be educated about the candidates. And we should be educated about their plans more than, you know, all of these things that, you know, that are surrounding the election, you know, all of these, you know, like hostile arguments and inflammatory comments and, you know, see all of the images and videos on Facebook, on the news. It's like everywhere. And to tell you the truth, it's very disturbing even to the children and to the teenagers. I mean, it is just so much for the children and teenagers to see. You know, I mean, you know, it's also, you know, like for regular individuals and for adults, but, you know, it, it, it's something different when it comes to children and they see all of these things, you know, like on the TV and on Facebook. So Absolutely, I, you know, my, my son was just telling me, do I have to hear that? You know, oh, when yeah. The, when the candidates are, are kind of going at, at each other and, 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 and calling each other names, and, and it was just nasty. I agree. I agree with you. And, you know, we have actually to shield our kids from this. And, you know, like, especially, you know, if they are children, they really do not, they do not need to see this. Although, although, if it was, you know, like, done in a respectful way, I think that it is like a great training for our children, you know, to learn about democracy and to learn about, you know, like, how to, how, how we will be able to make, you know, good choices, you know what I mean, but mm -hmm, not in mm -hmm. this situation. So I would say that, you know, like even for adults, we have to discon disconnect ourselves. We, we need to be educated, but, you know, we should have a break. You know, it's, it's, it's important, you know, that we should not be diving into this. We should have a break every now and then. We shouldn't be just like, you know, married to our iPhone all of the time and, you know, like, um, you know, moving from Facebook to the news and, you know, like, it, it shouldn't be all about election. So I would say take a break from Facebook, from TV, and, you know, from, you know, all of these, you know, news apps and stuff like that to unplug ourselves from, you know, from this whole thing. I think that this is very important. And sure. education is very important, you know, like about, you know, the candidates. You know, we want to know their values, you know, rather than the other things that we're hearing about. And I would say that we should try to do something for ourselves, like, you know, we should volunteer, you know, like, you know, to help poor people, you know, like, you know, we can even, like, volunteer, you know, like, in animal shelter or something like that, you know, to feel that we are doing something, you know, like, try to feed the homeless, try, you know, like, to help poor people, to do charity as much as we can. I mean, if we are not able, you know, like to get good values, you know, from those people, we can actually start doing the good values in ourselves. And if we are doing that, we can actually make more and more. So, you know, I would say that, you know, this is a way to, you know, like to run away from all of this stress. And, you know, it's always, you know, like a good idea after, you know, after being educated, that we have to vote. I mean, you know, I heard lots of people, you know, I was like in one of our gatherings, you know, yesterday, and some people said, oh, I'm not voting. We are like between a rock and a hard place. I want to vote for this, and I want to vote for this. 
So we will end up basically that we know our voice will not be heard. You know, yeah. I know that there isn't like a perfect candidate. I don't know if you agree with me or not. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, no, you know, yeah, especially but, in this election, I mean, you know, we are really between a rock and a hard place. I can't yeah. see, you know, like a perfect setting where I will be, you know, voting, you know, with all of my heart. And, you know, I will say, okay, you know, I really want to vote for this candidate because they are going, you know, like to improve, you know, like the situation of the homeless and the poor. And, you know, the, you know this candidate is going actually to take our nation, you know, like to the... Up and you know I, I I really do not see that but you know no. at least at least we have to choose one of them you know we That's have no other it. option so so uh, disassociate yourself T take a break from 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 the, the the daily grind of politics and education and as you said don't take it personal it this is this is just uh, you know trying to do something just pick the right candidate vote and move on. And also, you know, we have to look at the big picture. It, you know, like life is not all about election. You exactly. know what I mean? We have to look at the big picture. We have to look at, you know, the good stuff in our life. And this is, you know, it's not only, you know, to deal with the stress of election. Uh, this is a way to, <laughs> to deal with stress, any type of stress. You know, like a stress, you know, like of death of somebody who's, you know, like a loved one or a divorce or, you know, like, you know, problem with a child or a problem with, you know, a family or, you know, like any problem with work or, you know, there are like so many, so many sources of stress in this life. And, you know, the only way, the only way to overcome stress is always to look at the big picture. I don't know if you agree about that. Absolutely, absolutely. Absolutely. You yeah. know. And then, you know, we have to consult, you know, with uh, a specialist. I mean, you know, we can seek help if the stress becomes, you know, very overwhelming. You know, we'll never go Absolutely. wrong, you know, Absolutely. by consulting, you know, with a psychologist. Absolutely. And sometimes Absolutely. even with a psychiatrist. And even, you know, like sometimes we may need to, uh, you know, to be started on very low dose of antidepressants or anti-anxiety medications if needed. You know, so I would let's, say... Let, let's, let's try to avoid that and medicate. No, 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 I'm not saying yeah. about the election, yeah. but in, in sure. general, I'm talking about stress in general, that, you know, like if somebody is not able to, you know, to overcome stress, you know, by, you know, all of these measures, you know, you, you see a psychologist and you are still, yeah. you know, in stress. And I'm not talking only about sure. Sure. the stress of election. I'm talking about the stress anxiety and depression in general yes. yes yeah 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 absolutely we all have a lot to learn from that I really want to thank you for being with us uh, this morning this has been really uh, a valuable valuable advice and uh, you know as we come close to this segment uh, uh, it's always been a great providing us uh, sound advice uh, thank you so much dr. Sawan and we wish you a wonderful, wonderful weekend. We wish everyone a wonderful weekend. Just remember, everyone, go out and vote. I don't care who you vote for. And try to, as Dr. Swan says, minimize stress as much as possible. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, Dr. Swan. Thank you so much, Harry. Thank you. Bye now. So I want to remind you very quickly, you know, again, go out and vote. Uh, this is a beautiful day. It's a beautiful weekend. And it's a, it's a beautiful month. Um, let's make good choices. Uh, we appreciate you being with us. And before I leave you, also want to remind you that, you know, the, the fall is a perfect time to buy a home. If you're in the business, call us, 313-819-0101. Thank you so much, and goodbye.